markets. And for help with that, we're going to bring in business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor Seth Denson. Good morning, Seth. Hey, good morning, Alex. How are you? I am good, Seth. Well, the markets closed up yesterday, making it two straight days for gains on Wall Street. Ooh. But this morning, <laughs> this as a new key sign, the U.S. is on the brink of recession. Seth, can you explain everything that's kind of going on right now? Well, listen, I mean, it, it, inflation. There, there, there's your explanation. I mean, that, that's the reality of things right now. You've got too many dollars chasing too few things. But we are starting to see hope that maybe some inventory is picking up that could help. But here's the reality. The primary focus of inflation right now is energy prices, energy prices, energy prices. If we could get that under control, we could stave off a recession. But if, if gas peaks above $5, and there's not an analyst out there that's saying that it won't, at least not that I've heard, um, if it peaks above $5 and the American consumer is going to have to pull money in a different area to go get it, um, that's going to be a problem. So that's really what everything is hinging on. We can have all these discussions about supply chains and everything else and Fed rates and you name it. Energy prices, that is the critical key to make sure we don't go into a recession. Okay. All right. Elon Musk, now he's been warning Twitter he would do it, and now his bid to purchase the social media giant has officially been put on hold. Now, this is over Twitter's continued refusal to provide information on spam and fake accounts. At this point, Seth, do you think that both sides will eventually work things out and this deal will happen? You know, I, every day that goes by is a day that I feel less... Uh, positive that this is going to go through. I, I, I'm really starting to get the sense that maybe it won't. And there's two pieces to this. Obviously, Elon is holding on to this bot argument saying that the data he's seen isn't accurate uh, or he doesn't believe it is. The second thing is, though, it's Elon is trying to get a little bit of financing on this. The last thing he wants to do is shell out, you know, 40 billion plus in cash on this deal. And, and have to liquidate stock of Tesla or SpaceX, some of these other things he's got. Um, he's been going around to some private equity groups to try to raise some of this financing based on what I'm, I'm seeing and, and hearing. And, and quite frankly, when you're looking at spending $40 billion on a company that lost $200 million in revenue, uh, going into a potential recession and a lot of things out there that private equity firms don't like, they don't like chasing after losses either. Yeah. Uh, and especially when you're overpaying for them. So that's part of a concern. Here's the reality. If it doesn't go through, it's going to cost Elon a lot of money to get out of it regardless. Uh, yeah, well, you got to be a little cautious with $40 billion on the line. Yeah. All right, Seth, Target warned its investors yesterday to expect profits to actually take a short-term hit. But they promised that things will look better for the second half of the year. All right, what is going on with Target? Well, inventory. Uh, interestingly enough, all those ships that were sitting off the coast of California with all our stuff on them, well, they got here. Uh, and the problem is, is by the time they got here, American consumers were pulling back because of consumer confidence. Uh, and so Target and many other retailers are sitting on a ton of inventory uh, that they, quite frankly, just can't get rid of. Now, Target is saying they're going to do massive discounts. But here's the other problem Target has. Target has alienated a big populace of the purchasing group, specifically conservatives, giving their very, we'll call it woke approach to business. And, and quite frankly, it's turned a lot of people off. If you look at them, and we do tend to look at Target and compare it to Walmart, even though they are two or different organizations. Uh, but Target's down, stock is down 35% over the last six mm. months. Walmart's down too, but it's down 10%. But when you can go to Walmart and get, quite frankly, cheaper deals, uh, and, and even get your car serviced in the process. Uh, I think that's giving Walmart an edge in the big box retailer space, but certainly Target's got a loyal following and, and, and likely they will bounce back in the second half. And, and quite frankly, I think that there's probably some stocks to be had on sale here with Target. All right, here we go. This one's uh, getting me excited. Taco Bell has rolled out its first restaurant with a new high-tech drive through experience. I've seen online a lot of people are saying this looks like a bank. What is this thing? So, Seth, can you kind of break down um, what exactly Taco Bell is doing here? It looks just like a bank. It looks just like a bank, except when you drive up to it, it almost looks like some of those uh, COVID drive through um, vaccination centers as well, which kind of terrifies me a little bit. Listen, Taco Bell's trying to get a technology edge here and say, hey, listen, we got a new way of, of getting you your food. Uh, my goal is that they get it to me right. Uh, which doesn't always happen. And my enchilada with red sauce doesn't get all demolished in the process. But this is kind of a cool look, a cool vibe. I mean, people driving through, you know, it, it comes down. It, it's kind of t tying into their space technology, uh, you know, kind of 
theme that they're trying to go with here. Um, but effectively, order with the app, stick it up to the to the receiver, and then this uh, thing brings your food down. Pretty cool. No interaction Pretty with cool. people. But hey, here is a business thing that's part of this, though, Alex, and here's why it's important, and this makes a good business point. Businesses, as we've said for a long time, if, if they can't find employees, they'll find new ways to get people their goods and services. This is Taco Bell stepping up and saying, hey, we can mm -hmm. run an operation with fewer people using technology to allow us to get food from A to B. Yeah. So there's there's a first step and a first vision of what may be going on here. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see if any other fast food joints uh, follow suit with Taco Bell. So that Denson, yep. thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it.